Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents a memorable musical hit, Victor Herbert's Sweethearts, starring Jane Powell, Walter O'Keefe, and your host, Gordon McRae. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that also bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, along with all the Valentines you may have received today, you can add one more. For the Association of American Railroads, it's a great Broadway show with a great musical by Victor Herbert, and we call it Sweethearts. <laughs> If you've ever been in love, we're sure you'll enjoy tonight's show. For musical comedies are like fairy tales that everybody wishes could come true. The prince is always handsomer than any movie star, and the princess is just as lovely as, well, even Jane Powell, if that's possible. Jane's with us tonight in the role of Sylvia, and we have one of the favorite comics of Broadway and radio, Mr. Walter O'Keefe. He plays Mikel in Sweethearts. I'll be Franz, and Verna Felton is the owner of the Laundry of the White Geese. Just about the most romantic laundry that ever ripped a button off a shirt. The whole is to be ironed. Oh, how I hate to iron shirts. Oh, I don't mind. If it's a military shirt like this one. Oh, don't iron that shirt. Not yet. Well, why not, Sylvia? Well, uh, that shirt belongs to Franz. And if we get his laundry all ready for him, then he won't be in again for a whole week. Oh, ho, I think our little Sylvia's got a crush on a certain officer named Franz. Well, I, I think he's very nice. Are you in love with him or his uniform? I'm in love with his uniform when he's in it. And when he's marching with his company, oh, oh. here they come now. White geese, is my laundry ready? Name, please. Oh, come on, Sylvia. You know my name by this time. I've been coming in to get my laundry three times a day, just so I can talk to you. Rule number two, don't flirt with the customers. What's rule number one? Don't let the customers flirt with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Franz. Your laundry isn't ready yet. Good. I'll wait. But it might not be ready until tomorrow. Well, that's even better. I'm used to waiting for things. And by the way, how long do you think I'll have to wait for you to fall in love with me? Well, it well, it takes longer to fall in love than, than it does to start your collar. Oh, sweetie, you're wrong. You can fall in love as fast as you can scorch a shirt. Only this time, I'm the shirt. When love would have stood as my master When love would have led me a pace My heart never beat any faster 
And I only laughed in his face Girls fair as the rarest of flowers Girls all very charming to see Fairest of bowers, still you find me happily free. For every lover must meet his fate. So for the I like you very much, but... No I... buts. I'll settle for a maybe. All right, maybe. Done. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mother. Get back to work. And don't let me catch you chit-chatting with a uniform. Oh, yes, Mother. My dear madam, what do you have against a uniform? Nothing, except I married one. <laughs> a handsome, dashing chap who won your girlish heart, no doubt. Huh. Not so handsome. Here, I have his picture in this locket. Take a look if you can stand it. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is your husband? Was, thank goodness. What happened to him? He was a soldier of fortune, with very little fortune. And he ran off and left me with seven dollars, the bum. Now, go away, go away. I've got work to do. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. Can you direct me to the laundry of the white goose? Geese. Geese. Goose. <laughs> it all comes out in the wash. I just want... Why, your highness... Shh. Nobody around here knows I'm the Crown Prince of Zelania. Mikkel! Shh! Nobody around here knows I'm the Prime Minister of Zelania. I'm in disguise. As what? As the Prime Minister of Zelania. <laughs> what kind of a disguise is that? Look, I ask you, what Prime Minister would be dumb enough to disguise himself as a Prime Minister? It's foolproof. Mikkel, what are you doing here in Belgium? I lost control of the government. But I heard you'd regain control. That was yesterday. <laughs> Oh, Mikkel, all these revolutions, my poor native land. You've got no idea how poor it is. Don't forget I was also Secretary of the Treasury. <laughs> Your Highness, how would you like to be restored to the throne? Oh, Mikkel, to see my native country again, oh. the rolling hills, the rippling streams. Prince. The magnificent landscape. Prince, chum, tourists, oh. we can kid, but you and I, we've been to Zelania. <laughs> Let's face it, it's a gopher hole. <laughs> but, Your Highness, if you say the word, I can put you back on the throne of Zelania. Like that. Are you sure my people want me? We'll have an election, and I'll count the votes myself. <laughs> Mikkel, I won't have anything to do with your crooked plans. Look, Sam, you aren't the only heir to the throne of Zelania. <laughs> a 
the other royal house died out. I wouldn't be too sure, laddie. When the monarchy was overthrown by the first revolution, I slipped out of the country with a babe. Well, a little babe, a little babe. Only a few months old. And I left her right here beside this laundry 20 years ago. Now, if there's a pretty young girl in here in her early 20s... Oh, brother, have you got a surprise coming? What do you mean? Well, go out in the laundry. Find out for yourself. All right, I will. Is there a pretty girl in here in her early 20s? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. I never had astigmatism so good. <laughs> feel like the janitor in the YWCA. Tell me, do you all belong to one family? Why, why, yes. They call us little white geese. Well, quack, quack. <laughs> Look, is, uh, is one of you an adopted daughter? Yes, but Mother never told us which one was adopted. Well, I guess I'll have to hang around here until I find out. Girls. <laughs> Look, please keep your hands out of my hair. Oh. The television will be better, you know. The torture I go through for Zelania. None of you girls are married, I hope. Oh, no, we can't get married because we wear wooden shoes. Naturally, wooden shoes. Can't get married. Can't get married. Wooden shoes. There must be something my father didn't tell me. I guess you don't know the legend of Jeanette and her wooden shoes. Enlighten me, child. I'm listening all over. The lively Jeanette. A sprightly coquette. Who lives just for jollity. Had plenty of suitors. Had only to choose. Being a Dutch girl, she wore wooden shoes. When she stole out at night, all the town knew the news. When they heard the pit patter of her wooden shoes, then the lads half asleep, oh, how jealous they get. And they'd say to themselves, who is out with Janet? Who is up with Jeanette? Clippity clop clop, clippity clop clop. Over the tiles, her feet were footed, but she heard up for miles. With her peter peter powder, clip clop clop, gossip pursues. The secrets betrayed by Jeanette's wooden shoes. All that kid needed was a pair of sneakers. Oh, and she really got into trouble when she eloped with the prince. Oh? It was in the middle of winter. Yes, yes. And the king sent out his guards to bring back the two lovers. Don't tell me. I can see it coming. <laughs> clip up, up, clip up, up, there in the snow. Her feet so petite showed them which way to go. With her peter patter patter clip clop, clop, they found the clue. And Jeanette lost her prince to the prince of her shoes. It's enough to make a girl spend the rest of her life barefooted. Iron! Do you hear me? Iron! Oh, oh, Mother's coming. We'll have to get back to work. Well, hide me someplace. Where can I hide? Quick, jump in this hamper of dirty clothes. Don't forget I'm in here. And when you're sorting this, remember, I'm the one without the laundry marks. Quick, quick, get in here. Here comes Mama. Now, that's right, girls. Iron. Yes, Mama. Didn't I hear a man's voice in here? Oh, no, Mama. That clothes hamper looks a little bulgy. Is anybody hiding in that clothes hamper? Nobody in here except us bloomers. <laughs> well, that's good. Get to work, girls. Iron, iron. Girls, girls, do you know who I think that man is in the clothes hamper? Who? Who? Who do you think it is? Papa. <gasps> Papa? Papa. Well, what makes you think so? Well, it must be Papa. Why else would he want to hide from Mama? And besides, besides, he looks just like the picture in Mama's locket. Hey, Sylvia. Are you back again, Franz? Your laundry isn't ready yet. Well, I'm looking for something you can't wrap up in a package and tie with a string. Well, what's that? As if I didn't know. It's something you can never find by looking for it. And all of a sudden, you glance around, and there it is. Right out of your own back window. You're right, Franz. If you ask where love is found, the sort of love that's for undone true. I'm 
Perhaps love is very trying, but you really must not mind it. If it comes not to your sighing, there is always one place you can find it. Seek the dwelling of two happy sweethearts. You Hearts make love their very own. Sweethearts can live on love alone. Open the gates to Sunshine fell in the shade. In his inaugural address on January 20th, President Truman spoke of the value to the peoples of the world of what he described as America's imponderable resources in technical knowledge. Agreeing with what the president said and commenting upon it, the New York Times cited a tremendous upsurge of wartime production in America as an example of what has been accomplished by this know-how of our people. But, the Times went on to say, and I quote, It did not require war to demonstrate American supremacy in the field of applied technology and mechanical skill. A classic example is furnished by comparing the development of railroading in this country with that of other nations. Such a comparison reveals that American railroads excel in virtually every respect, ranging from wages paid to efficiency of operation and freedom from accidents. End of quotation. Continuing its comment, the Times emphasized what it called, and again I quote, the fundamental reason for our superiority in this sphere. For it is no accident of history or geography. It reflects the fact that where the railroads of most countries are state-owned and managed, ours are privately owned and operate in competition not only among themselves, but with other forms of transportation. End of quotation. The efficiency of which the New York Times spoke reached a record high on American railroads in 1948. To mention just one example... In the year just closed, the average freight train turned out more transportation service per hour. That is, it hauled more tons of freight more miles than ever before. And that record is typical of the year's performance of what the Times rightly calls the most efficient railroads in the world. We're ready for the second act of Victor Herbert's Sweetheart, starring Jane Powell, Walter O'Keefe, and your Railroad Hour host, Gordon McRae. Are you still in there? Are you still in the clothes hamper? Are you all right? I 
didn't mind hiding in there, but you didn't have to leave the lid down all through the commercial. <laughs> you know, you know, we know who you are. You do? Well, quick, tell me. Welcome home, Papa. <laughs> Papa? Now, there's no use trying to deny it. We all knew you were our father. I'm the father of seven girls? Yes. Cantor will never speak to me. <laughs> well, gooselings, or I should say geeselings, why don't you, uh, why don't you all line up and each one give Papa a big hug and a squeeze to welcome him home? Ah, huh? <laughs> uh, kiss me, my little daffodil. Welcome home, Papa. Oh, <laughs> Daddy. Now bust me, my little buttercup. Now you, my little Daisy. Is there a dandelion in the house? Here. Hooray for dandelion. Hey. Hey, this is a fine way to run a laundry. When you figure out a better way, let me know. Ooh. How does a customer get some service around here? This kind of service we don't waste on the customers. Mm. Me, Kel, what's going on here? Girls, girls, go wash clothes. Papa has to explain to the gentleman. Oh, Papa? Sure, Papa. You see, I had to figure out a way to stick around here. I've got to find out which one of these daughters is an heir to the throne of Zelania. Well, which one do you think it is? The prettiest one, naturally. Well, how are you going to tell which one's the prettiest, Mikel? You know, powder and paint makes a girl what she ain't. Who's complaining? <laughs> it doesn't matter what is done by nature for a pretty one. She's never satisfied till she her hand has tried. A touch of rouge applied with skill Will make her more like nature still Her cheeks a shell like pink Are all her own, we think And as this goddess goes her way She chuckles as she hears us say She's pretty as a picture as a rose, grace in every movement, charm in every pose, ha, ha, a clever little woman, we all understand that nature cannot make you what you can do. By hand. Why, Franz, don't you think we girls are as pretty as we look? Why, you're as pretty as a picture. But did you ever see a picture without any paint? Ah, oh, I see. You're catching up to our secret. <laughs> Though nature draws the picture true, a girl must add a line or two. She steals the color scheme of peaches mixed with green. Nature's done the best she could. The eyebrows arched as eyebrows should. And this movie is made a more bewitching shade. No painting's done with so much care. No wonder all the men By the way, Sylvia, is my laundry ready yet? Oh, no, don't be silly. Come back later. Well, you bet I will, Mikel. And by the way, Daddy, mm -hmm. while you're bouncing back and forth between the buttercups and the daisies, don't be too fatherly with this orchid. All right, wet wash, go hang yourself up to dry. <laughs> I'll remember, Mikel. No tricks. Ah. Uh... 
Oh, you got to be nicer to him, Papa. Why? You're not in love with him, are you? Well, I, I might be. You don't act very lovey-dovey. Oh, you must never do that. Uh-huh. Remember, if you want to catch a husband, you've got to be very cold to him until he proposes. I'll remember that if I'm ever a girl. <laughs> uh, Papa, tell me, where have you been all these years? I have been in and out of Zelania. Zelania? What's that? It's a little country here in Europe. Don't uh, you know where it is? No. How do you find it? Well, it's right there on the map as big as life. Well, not quite as big as life. It's more the size of Newsweek. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it must be an... Must be a very, very small place. It is so small, dear. Look, I'll tell you. Whenever the prince went out back of the palace to wash his hands, he had to clear customs. <laughs> oh, Poppy, you're so clever. When you come right down to it, you know I am. My wit is so keen and so clever, my ways, that I am much sought as a guest. The things that I say keep me laughing for days. Ha! For instance, here's one of my best. This one is going to assassinate you. I went to the circus one day with a crowd, and I sat me outside in the fence. When asked why I did so, I said right out loud, because the heat in the tents is intense. Exceedingly amusing. I thought so. Oh, I don't know how I do it, but I do. I don't know how I've said it when it's said. As a melancholia killer, I'm a genuine Joe Miller. I really knock him dead. I don't know how I say the things I say. I don't know how I've said them when they're said. I only am aware that all the people stare and ardently declare what a head. What a head! What a head! I'm a panic. <laughs> You're a panic, all right. What's the idea of turning up after all these years? Sylvia, is this big laundry bag, Mama? <laughs> well, don't you recognize it? Of her? course, Mama. I'm home. Kiss me. I'd rather have a nerve killed. <laughs> Mama, you're not a widow any longer. No, I knew it was too good to last. Well, if you expect me to support you, you've got to do some work. Lift that laundry bag, tote that bale of dirty clothes. Yes, Snookums. And iron. Everybody iron! <laughs> Hello. Guess what I want. Your laundry isn't ready yet. As a matter of fact, it is. Oh, heck. Here it is, Franz. Thanks, Sylvia. Hey, just a minute. I brought in four handkerchiefs and a shirt, and now there are five handkerchiefs. Look again. One of those handkerchiefs has a sleeve. <laughs> now, get out of here. We've got work to do, Your Highness. Your Highness? I mean... He means... A... What do you mean? Franz, I thought you were just an ordinary soldier. Why would he call you Your Highness? Well, Sylvia, you may as well know the truth. I'm really the crown prince of Zelania. Oh, oh, Franz. Oh, I mean, your highness. Well, what's the matter, Sylvia? What difference does it make? Well, well a plain girl in a laundry, she can't marry a prince. Marry? Would, would you marry me? Would you? Really? I can never marry you now. <laughs> Sylvia, come back. Sylvia!
When you love somebody, what does it matter who you are? Oh, Sylvia, listen to me. For every lover must meet his friend. My One way to measure the efficiency of our railroads is to do what the New York Times did in the editorial we were talking about a few minutes ago. That is, to compare their operations with those of the railroads of other countries. But there is another and a tougher standard by which to measure them. And that is to compare the post-war operations of American railroads with their own records in the peak pre-war year of 1939. In the year 1948, the average freight car carried the highest load of any peacetime year. Each day, this average freight car produced transportation service equivalent to moving more than 1,020 tons of freight one mile, as against less than 600 ton miles in 1939. And here's a striking fact about fuel efficiency. Last year, freight locomotives moved a ton of freight one mile on only two ounces of coal, or a tablespoonful of oil when burned in a steam engine, or on a teaspoonful of oil when used in a diesel locomotive. Uh, that's a lot of figures about railroad performance, and there are many more in the records. But they all add up to just this, that the American railroads are turning out transportation service for the people of this country not only more efficiently than any other transportation system in the world, but also more efficiently than their own previous records. <laughs> The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. Now for Act Three of Victor Herbert's Sweetheart, starring Jane Powell, Walter O'Keefe, and your host, Gordon McRae. Yes, Snookums, a fine business. The leading politician of Zelania, pressing ruffles in a petticoat. Iron! Yes, Mama, Papa is iron. <laughs> Why? 
Come to think of it, why is Papa ironing? I'm not even Papa. I'm crazy. Iron. Iron your own petticoats. I'm getting sick and tired of this laundry. All right, then get out. All right, I will. On one condition. Anything. Tell me, Mama, which one of our daughters is adopted? You're their father. You ought to know. You know she's got a point there? <laughs> you have a point there, Duchess, but I confess I am not your husband. Thank heaven. Well, then, who are you? I'm the guy who left that little baby in your tulip garden 20 years ago. And now I want her back again. She's the heir to the throne of Zelania. My little Sylvia, a princess. Well, this ought to make our gal Sylvia pretty happy. She won't have to ask the question. Can a young girl from a laundry in Belgium find happiness married to Zelania's most famous crown prince? <laughs> oh, what a surprise this is. Sylvia, Franz, come in. Yeah, come on in, kids. We got some good news for you. Oh, what kind of good news? What is it, Papa? Don't call this old windbag Papa. He isn't your father. He isn't? No, Sylvia. You were adopted. Why... Why, then Sylvia must be the other heir to the throne of Zelania. Yep. Ain't it convenient how these things work out here? <laughs> what? Then you won't have to worry about marrying a prince, because you're a princess. Well, I, I just can't believe it. Hey, kids, your highness. When the two of you get restored to the throne of Zelania, I, uh... <clears throat> I happen to know of an unemployed prime minister who is between engagements. Has wardrobe, will travel, doubles in brass. <laughs> oh, no. Not a chance, Mikel. You'll never get a job in my government. No, no, no. Our government, darling. Oh, yes. Of course, my sweet. <laughs> you know, I really think we ought to be able to find some kind of a position for a man who used to be my father. Well, all right. We'll make him third assistant secretary of agriculture in charge of corn. <laughs> Now, that's gratitude for you. Franz. Yes, my princess? Sometimes, sometimes I'm an awfully moody person. Do you think you can love me, whatever mood I'm in? Oh, of course, darling. For I'll make love to you to suit your mood. The game of love has so many plays. Whenever you are pursuing, you must adapt your ways to the mood of the girl you are wooing. For instance... If I play a coquette? Then this is what you'll get. You little flirt, you're too good to be true. Trifle with me if you dare. Give me one kiss or I'll take it from you. What's that? You dare me? Well, there. <laughs> but when she strikes the romantic mood... Mid sentimental environs, she must be gently wooed with the sonnets you've copied from Byron's. A moonlight night, a wandering breeze, and some such words as these. Come, lovely maid, to some heavenly glade. Neath the saru. Skies. There we will live on the love that is laid deep in the depths of your eyes. But suppose I find you a martial maid whose tears are ever so merry, following each parade with your heart on the gay military. Then I would don a uniform gay and court you in this way. As I go marching, my heart fills with joy. When my own sweetheart I see, a man surrender to your soldier boy and march away here with me. As I go marching, my heart fills with joy. Do we have to wait till we're king and queen to get married? No. Let's get married tomorrow. Tonight. Right now. Oh, I love you, my darling. Oh, my sweetheart. Oh, uh, 
How do you like that for the ending of a fairy tale? Hans Christian Andersen, the Grimm Brothers, even St. Valentine. I'll give them cards and spades if they can top this one. Sweethearts make love their very own. Sweethearts can live on love alone. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. This is Gordon McRae saying thank you to Jane Powell, Walter O'Keefe, and Verna Felton for joining me in Sweethearts with book by Harry B. Smith, lyrics by Robert B. Smith, and music by Victor Herbert, and adapted for radio by Lawrence and Lee. Say, Walter, we, we never did get to visit Zelania, did we? <laughs> Gordon, did you ever try to get a round trip ticket to a mythical kingdom? Well, it, it's tough, you know. What's next week, Gordon? A great old favorite, Janie, Lady Be Good, starring Groucho Marx, complete with mustache and eyeglasses. And the week following, the first air performance of the Song of Norway with Marina Koshetz and members of the cast of the original operetta. We'll be listening, Gordon. Oh, at our house, we always listen to the railroad hour. Just like having a big Broadway show in your own living room. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. Sweethearts has been presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Jane Powell appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture The Sun Comes Up, starring Jeanette MacDonald, Lloyd Nolan, Claude Jarman Jr., and Lassie. Gordon McRae appeared on this program by arrangement with Warner Brothers. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by 132 railroads of the United States. Each one competes keenly with others for business. But all of them work together through the Association of American Railroads for the improvement of all railroading and for better service to you. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.